All right, so you know the old saying, hindsight is 2020. Well, that pretty much means that we've done some mistakes in the past, and if we could relive the past, we do things a little bit differently. And that's pretty much the case with me breeding ball pythons. Let me tell you, if I could start today from scratch and start my whole operation over again, I definitely do things a little bit different. And I'd say probably the number one mistake, the mistake that you might be doing starting up a ball python breeding operation is you're buying hatchlings and sitting on them for a long time waiting for those females to mature. Sometimes it could take two or three years, sometimes even four or five years before your females are ready to breed. And let me tell you, when I first started out, I almost broke the bank waiting for my females to mature. And some of those females from the beginning still aren't big enough. Some of them have gone off food for a long time and some are really picky. And I think the thing that really saved me from the brink of bankruptcy is actually someone offered me their collection of females. They were actually getting out of breeding ball pythons, had a whole bunch of females that were up to size, ready to breed, never been bred before. And I bought like eight or nine females. And the very next year, I had a huge success, tons of eggs, and I produced all these amazing snakes. And finally, I could sell some hatchlings and put that money back into my operation and now it seems like ever since that initial jump the the kickstart from those females it's like now I have hatchlings year after year after year and I can sit on some stuff and wait for them to mature and then some of the other stuff I already have cranking out the babies which is essentially the money to pay for the food and the bedding and all my time and, and you know investing in other projects and stuff like that so today I want to show you how you can make money fast with snakes and essentially if you're starting out in ball pythons I would highly recommend doing something like this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to morph market and I want to show you some of my tricks on how to buy some of the biggest females possible with the minimal amount of expense all right, so I'm gonna jump right over here on morphmarket.com, and if you haven't been here, I'd say you have the largest selection of snakes anywhere in the world on morphmarket.com. If you come over to the homepage over here, you can see there's actually 12,536 ball pythons that are for sale right now on morphmarket.com. And the funny thing is, when I started looking at Morph Market, I'd say maybe five or six years ago, there was probably only six thousand snakes on here and if you look at the total number of snakes it's it's it's, uh, it's tens of thousands that have been listed and sold and there's still 12,000 for sale so it keeps growing year after year after year it's pretty amazing so kind of the trick to looking for the biggest female breeders uh, that's kind of what I want to show you in this video it's it's kind of tricky to work around morph market to actually find some of the biggest breeders that will essentially the the bigger the female, the more eggs you'll produce. Another thing you have to keep in mind is if you're looking for males, males are actually ready to breed in about a year. So you could get a male, pretty much any male, from you know six months to a year old, and it doesn't take very long for a male to actually be ready to breed. About 500 grams and a male is ready to go. So you have a huge selection of males, but if you want to jumpstart your females, I would say you need some tricks to actually find them. So the hard part is when you come over over here you're looking through all these snakes and there is just thousands and thousands of snakes and you're like all right what do I actually choose and essentially you want to take this narrow it down to just the females and then narrow that down to the biggest females that you can find so I actually opened a tab over here and and the way you get to this is you click on the filters button right here you click on filters and then it opens up this tab you can actually filter and I would actually filter here by the female and here you can filter by the oldest birth and here you can click for sale basically if you're looking for something for sale you actually want to leave it on for sale and from any store and then you hit go and when you hit go it brings you over to here you can see there's 5,748 female ball pythons that you can actually choose from but you can see here they're actually sorted by the oldest birth 
So the thing, the kind of the trick is from here, it's, I would say it's still difficult to figure out exactly which ball python is the biggest. Just by looking at this, you really can't tell. And there's page after page after page, you know, from some really old ball pythons that are, the, you know, they start in from a 2005. That is a pretty old ball python. So really what you want to do is right here, it says list view over on the right. You actually want to click the list view because over here it gives you some of the ball pythons but you're not actually seeing every single female that's for sale you're only seeing the females that have pictures on the ads which a lot of people don't don't really know and the, the, the other thing is is right here you're seeing 1 through 20 you're only seeing 20 ball pythons if you click over here on the list view it actually gives you a list of 50 ball pythons and it is showing you all the ones with pictures and without pictures so you have you know for example this snake right here doesn't have a picture and you actually won't see it on the other view but you actually see it here so the ones without the little picture tab actually uh, there's just a few of them where they don't list the pictures but sometimes those are the ones you actually want to go after so the interesting thing is is here's another trick so so you, you're looking over here and essentially you can actually sort by, it gives you kind of a random list of the weights. So you can actually click on the weight and you can sort by the biggest ball python. And that's that's really what you want to do. Actually, I have two big caramel albinos. They're just normal het caramel albinos. I actually got them both for $300 for the pair, which is kind of amazing. I can't even believe it. And they produced, I think last year, my biggest one laid uh, 13 eggs and the year before it laid 15 eggs. And I crossed it with a bamboo. And let me tell you, half of those were bamboos. I definitely banked on those crossing with just a straight bamboo. Half of them were normals. And I still had a really good, really good year with those big females. They can lay uh, pretty much up to 15 eggs if you're you're lucky on some of these big ones and so the other thing here's another trick so if you're looking through this list and you're sorting by weight essentially it, it kind of tricks you here because because you're thinking all right there's one for 43 58 grams and they're all the other ones are below 3,000 grams but believe it or not there's actually more snakes here on morph market that are above 3,000 that are females uh, over 3,000 grams, and you're just not seeing them on this page. And this is how this is the secret on how to get to the hidden snakes on Morph Market. So essentially, what you're doing is you're looking at the oldest birth over here, and you're sorting by the biggest size. But another thing you can do is you can go all the way to the bottom, and you can actually click on this number two, open it up in another tab, and it'll give you another page of the oldest ball pythons. And these you can actually sort by size right here. And you can take a look. There's some for 3,406. 3,120, 3,058, 3,038. <laughs> you see there's there's a whole bunch over 3,000. And you can do the same again. Go all the way to the bottom, click on number three over to this next page. And here on the third page, they're not quite uh, 3,000, but some of them are pretty big. And you can kind of go back and forth between these pages and kind of sort through. So I actually went to the fourth page and sorted by size over here. Here's another one for 3,000 grams. So you can see if you actually open page after page after page and then sort by the weight, you can actually do pretty good and find some really big females. So essentially uh, what I did here, I actually went to the fifth page <laughs> and sorted again. And you see here's another one for 3,216. And here's another one, actually this is, Another page that I opened up, this is uh, pretty much 2800, so you can see, you kind of go through the pages, so this one's actually, this one's the seventh page that I opened up, and uh, you can see, you pretty much don't give up, you gotta keep opening page after page, and sometimes it'll jump up, you'll get some that aren't quite that old, that have a lot of weight to them, essentially that's what you're looking at, which is kind of interesting. So what I did is I picked five big, huge females, if you're looking for a Project to invest in. If I was starting over from scratch, this is what I would invest in, these five snakes. And I'd say between these five snakes, 
probably within less than a year, if I picked a really good male, you know, probably what I do is I buy really low end females that are really big, huge females, and then pick a male that has three or four really good genes, maybe spend a little more for the male and breed them to these females. And let me tell you, within the first year, you could be cranking out, I'd say between 50 and 60 hatchlings you'd probably get out of these, assuming they actually all breed the first year. Sometimes I'd say usually about 80% would go, so maybe four out of five would go. And if you're lucky, they'd all, all five would lay eggs and you'd have an incredible year. So take a look at this. This is one of the snakes I would buy right here. This snake is 4,000. 358 grams pretty much pretty much the biggest ball python you can e even ask for and take a look at this here in the description this is the biggest spider that has ever been posted on morph market by a country mile <laughs> the handling her is more like handling a blood python this is a big snake and they go on to say she laid five fur legs this year 11 fur legs last year but I bet uh, they're, they're just talking about the fertile eggs and if you don't keep Pairing the male, uh, I would say, you know, typically what I do is I pair the male for three or four days and then give them some time off, I'd say maybe a week or two, and then pair it back with the female and keep putting the male in again and again and again for like six months straight. And that has worked really well. I think this year, I think I only had two slugs out of a hundred ball python hat, uh, fertile eggs. So the, I think the trick is to actually get fertile eggs. You need to keep putting that male back in with the female consistently over the six month breeding period. I pretty much keep putting the males in every couple weeks, uh, pretty much until they ovulate. And I think that's the trick. So they're just talking about fertile eggs. I, I can almost guarantee they probably got 13 to 15 eggs out of a big girl like this. This is a really big snake. So if you come over here, here is the number two I would buy. This is, uh, actually, let's go back to that one. That was only uh, $350. So if you're, ta you're talking about a pretty minimal investment for a big snake like that. And let's take a look at this one. This is another $350. So you're looking at uh, like 800 uh, plus shipping for uh, for some of these snakes and for, for some people that might be a big investment but let me tell you you can easily recoup that money back probably multiply it by a factor of 10 e easily in the first year if you picked a good male and bred it with these females so it's i would say it's 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 a pretty good investment if you want to get into it and the thing is once you have these big females you can keep breeding them year after year and eventually phase these out and that's essentially what people are doing they they have these big Big super pastels and they're replacing them with some of their other stuff like their clowns and some of the really high-end stuff that that'll bring a little bit more money than just the super pastel and they're essentially unloading some of the old stuff but as it for a beginner this would be awesome to jump right into so take a look at this this is a super pastel 3406 grams it's pretty amazing this is a huge super pastel girl Amazing breeder and feeds well on huge frozen thawed rats. Only selling her is a need space for holdbacks. So essentially that's that's kind of where I am. Uh, I'm kind of going through this transition where I'm starting to raise up a lot of really cool stuff. And I have those really big het caramel albinos that are almost 5,000 grams. Thinking about unloading them at some point because I'm not sure I want to keep expanding to where I just want to hold all my big females. I'm not exactly sure. It's, it's always a dilemma because they're good money makers, but you always want to keep upgrading your collection. And that's essentially you know what someone's been in the business for a few years and they start unloading some of the normals and the single gene stuff which is pretty cool so a super pastel everything that that breeds with would actually be pastel which is kind of neat so here is a big lemon blast, 3,120 grams. I was actually fortunate. I bought almost 10 snakes and I paid about $150 and I didn't have to pay shipping because it was a local deal. And the, the reason they're pretty much half price is because I got them here locally and the guy just wanted to get rid of them and get rid of them all at once. And I can't even remember what I paid for the whole package. It was like 1,500 bucks or something, which was a pretty amazing deal for a whole package sometimes you can find whole packages for for uh 
for a deal. So this one is, she'll be available as soon as she lays eggs. So this one's actually breeding. Uh, might be available, but uh, it looks like she's actually going to breed. So this one is pretty impressive. It's a little bit more expensive, 3,038 grams. $800, kind of a hard hard price to swallow, but you have to remember this is actually a three gene leopard, pastel, and fire, which is a really powerful breeder. As a matter of fact, I might actually buy this one. This is pretty amazing, a leopard firefly. You could do some amazing stuff with a leopard firefly, especially a big girl like that. And a lot of times they'll say, um, on this particular one, it's live small rats. So. Essentially, uh, if it's live rats only, sometimes they're only live rats. There's nothing else they will take. I actually have, I think, five snakes now that will only eat live rats. They refuse pretty much everything else. And I'd say if you have a live rat only, you pretty much want to think about breeding your own rodents because otherwise you'll break the bank buying live rats from the pet store. You can buy in bulk, you frozen thawed, but when it comes to live rats, let me tell you, you're better off uh, better off raising your own than actually uh, act going to a pet store and buying them because they can be really expensive. So that is another thing you have to keep in mind if you're buying into a project like this. So here is the fifth snake that I would buy. It is 2,847 grams, essentially anything over 1,500 grams, and the female is ready to breed. So these are way, way above, you know, being ready. This, these are like the biggest snakes on morph market. I, I'd say you'd be hard pressed to find any snakes bigger than this, especially females ready to breed. So this is amazing. And especially for this price, look at this, 400 bucks for a pastel fire. That is pretty amazing. And here's another one. It'll be av available as soon as she laid. So essentially on, on a lot of these, if, if they say they're available as soon as they lay, essentially what's happening is they're, they're going to lay eggs and then you have a certain amount of time to actually get them back up to weight before they're ready to breed again. And I would always say, if, if you're looking to breed within the first year, you want a fast return on investment, you might think about getting a snake that's a little bit lighter, maybe in the 2,800, 2,900 grams, something that is ready to breed. A lot of times people just kind of take their females out of the breeding circulation and just sit on them for a couple years. And then they decide, I haven't bred this for a while and it's not really part of my breeding program. I'm just gonna unload it. And that is really what you want. Something that's, you know, just been eating for a couple years and up to weight and hasn't laid eggs for a year or two, especially, I'd, I'd probably say within the last year, if it hasn't laid eggs, it's a safe bet to actually get that female and have it lay eggs the very first year. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Bozy Reptiles asks, can you make a desert ghost by breeding a desert to a ghost? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, that is where a lot of confusion comes in. Actually, there's a lot of people that come up to my table or they see some of my desert ghost stuff and they're like, ooh, that is the desert gene. We want to stay away from it because of the infertility of the females. You know, the desert has a problem breeding the females. Essentially, we consider the females infertile and not a lot of people work with the desert gene. And let me tell you, you can actually make a desert, cross it with a ghost, which is recessive. The desert's co-dominant breed them together and you actually get a desert plus a ghost which is actually called a desert ghost which is completely different from the single recessive mutation called the desert ghost it's it's extremely unfortunate that they actually named the two so similar and there's a problem with the desert but not the desert ghost it's it's pretty confusing and for me as a breeder i'd say it's probably one of the biggest challenges because i really have to educate people especially when i'm selling het desert ghost ball pythons as a matter of fact i have a lot of hatchlings this year that are het for desert ghost and i really have to explain to people especially at the shows when i'm showing them my snakes i have to explain that this is not the desert gene where they have a problem with the females. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.